Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Chronicles of a Nonprofit, where we discuss the highs and lows of business development and all the moral and ethical principles that should go into the ingredients of making a great business to be more, to do more, to have more in your industry. I'm Dr. Darina Shine, and you are tuned into the podcast at Dr. Darina Shine TV. I want to first start by saying welcome to everyone who is here today, November the 7th, 2023, a beautiful time, a wonderful time, a time where one can use their basic feelings and emotions and ideas to promote something that they desire, what they want, okay? And this is an everyday thing. It's not just a November 7th thing. This is a this is an area of life where as entrepreneurs, we experience it more because we go into the self-confidence mode of manifesting things for ourselves by having to make decisions on a constant basis. So we're used to it. But what about the person who is not used to making decisions for themselves? This is a day where they feel, oh, I can make a decision, you know. But let's go a little bit deeper into that. What happens when, as an entrepreneur or a person in the field of business, you yourself has to deal with an individual who is demanding that you do this or requesting that you do that or suggesting that this should be part of your um, your job description as an entrepreneur? What do you do with clients like that? Well, let me tell you, sometimes putting, all times, putting ourselves first without being narcissistic, without being, you know, having the agenda that I'm going to manipulate and use everyone that's around me, you know, without having to do that, but just putting yourself first is one of the most critical, valuable things that we can do as a leader in our lives. We don't have to be an entrepreneur. We can be a girlfriend. We can be a boyfriend. We could be a significant other in the lives of people we care about. We can be a child to a parent. We can be a parent to a child. When we set the boundaries and decide for ourselves, this is what we want to do, that's where we need to go. No one, no matter how the situation or circumstance befalls should do something that in their hearts they really and truly felt that they can't do. Now, some people will use the guilt trip because that's what they've been used to doing, the control mechanism. But, you know, what happens when a person teaches someone that they're not going to step over boundaries like that? That individual who has constantly been able to manipulate through the mechanisms of control through words or making people feel bad about their situation. They're used to that. But as we, as entrepreneurs, show people how to respect us, show people how to be empowered and inspired themselves, show people that, you know, We're all adults here. We all have lives. We are not anyone else's responsibility. That is the key. Because I'm not going to, when someone tells me to move or do something or I got to do it, that's when my spirit just shuts down. I'm not doing it. No matter how severe it is. Not me. Why? Because it will always be that way. And when we teach someone how to treat us, Guess what? Our lives get better. Peace is among us. You know, we are we are peace generators. Mm -hmm. Now, yes, some people can talk about their emotions and what they feel and be open. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. 
being open and being told something that surprises you in some way is not a disrespect. It's not. But it's how you respond to the situation that makes it what it becomes. So if you're having issues with another person and they overstep boundaries and they say things that you could not believe they said, it's not that they said it. It's how you're going to react to it and what you do with that. And how okay you feel about having said it. Now, there's a difference when you feel all guilty and all mushy. Oh, man, I can't believe I said that. I feel like a bad person. It's fake because in your heart, you really and truly and and honestly know that you didn't have it to give. You didn't have it to do. You didn't have the energy to perform the actions. You didn't have the wherewithal to provide whatever services they were requesting or demanding. So you become your own barrier. You become your boundary. Remember the fence in the backyard. If someone hits your fence, you know that that a boundary has been crossed. And then you take precautions. Well, it could only be, uh, you know, this person. So what are we going to do about it? When that takes place, then we can handle it immediately. But <clears throat> when emotional, when emotional boundaries has been crossed, when um, boundaries of financial, you know, um, abuse has been crossed, then you feel it more than you see it. So that's what I'm here to say today. So taking the guilt from what it is you're telling yourself you're going to, you know, do. Okay, I'm going to, no, I'm not going to give this person um, $25 because I just don't have it. And they try to make you feel bad. Then here's what you do. You set your boundary. You make it plain. And you back away. That is the only way that the individual is going to learn that their manipulative skills will not work here, not here. And then what happens? The manipulator becomes, um, they become confused because now they don't understand, well, why are you not doing this? Why are you not reaching out to me? Why are you withholding this? So then what will happen is one or two things. This manipulator is going to grow in the event or the circumstance, and they're going to do what they need to do and become independent and stay that way, or they're going to walk away because they have nothing to equate the manipulative barrier for them. It no longer feels good. So when they sit down, it's not as cushiony as it would be. It's very harsh. It's very cruel. And it feels uncomfortable. So nobody likes to be uncomfortable, so they're going to move. They're going to do what they need to do to make themselves more comfortable, whatever it happens to be. So setting those boundaries and letting people know and being honest with them, there's nothing that a person can do then be more honest with a person who tries to overstep boundaries. When we are open with those people, then they have nothing else to connect or tie themselves to us. There's no commitment. There's none other than what we provide, the service in which we provide. And this is where a lot of people who are very nice who are very kind, they get taken advantage of during the process of the collaboration or relationship phase. Because what's happening is they are looked at as being weak. So when this person needs something, they're going to go to the weakest link because they know that they can probably maneuver through and get what they want. But if a person is just kind but very intellectual and discerning, 
they're going to find that, no, you're not going to come. This is what we're not doing. <laughs> because then, you know, I've been told that I've, I'm passive aggressive. It's not that. It's that people read me intentionally different. I'm extremely, extremely nice. But when it comes down to me being who I am, I'm going to be who I am when you show me who you are. And there is nothing wrong with that. Why should I give my surprise to you when I my goal is to see how you're going to maneuver and try to play me? It's always been that way. I've always been a thinker like that. Oppositionally thought thinker. I'm, I'm an oppositional thinker as well as a critical thinker, a philosopher. So I, when I philosophize, if that's a word, Ice Cube on Friday, if I philosophize that I'm going to watch how this person tries to play their game, why should I tell? Why, why should I give my trump card? No pun intended. Why should I give the trump up? No, I'm not going to do that. So with that being said, all entrepreneurs should really and truly have a mission of how they're going to treat their client base. Any leader in life must have that critical perspective of how they're going to handle their children, their significant other, their relationship. And, you know, people feel that people are more needy and clingy when they try to maneuver one way and try to go down the path of something different only to be pulled back to what is comfortable. That person will not grow. That person will stagnate and become the same person that they've been back there, even though they're learning lessons. You know, they're learning, but at a at a rate where it's it makes no sense to learn because you're not going to be able to adapt that learning technique to an experience because you're not growing, you're not moving, so you're staying stagnant. And then eventually the person who held you back will be the very one that will laugh at you in the end because you never grew. So you stayed exactly where they wanted you to stay in that perspective, in that level. And a lot of people in relationships, a few people, you know, who are in narcissistic relationships, they will encounter that. Even with a boss, if you know that you want to get out and start your own business, but your boss continually holds you back. They tell you what you can and cannot do. They empower you to do this, that, and whatever. But then they don't give you the means to make it happen. Yeah, that becomes a problem. So if you're not a quick thinker, you're not going to be able to maneuver to the next level. And everything that you've worked for is going to fall. It's going to crumble because you don't know what to do next. But if you're a critical thinker, you're going to analyze things and you're going to make them work. And you're going to have a reason for them working. So, yeah, that is that is powerful. That is uh, a tool that is used and needed to be used. And people grow. And in this growth, they have to sit back and see how long did it take and not be angry at the fact that it took maybe a year, two years, three years, 10 years, 19 years, 25 years, as long as you learned. I don't care how long it takes. When you learn, you do better. And when you do better, your life gets better. So that's all that it's about anyway, in the end, right? So I just wanted to get on and let you all know that never let anyone tell you what you gotta do, what you better do. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's not how today's society works. We have, we're in the inter, international placement of education, increasing resource um, opportunities where we can go and look at other people and compare our lives to them 
and see if this is natural, if it's normal. We can go and look, talk to a doctor that does not have to be on our personal level to where as, you know, um, they're so intimate with us until we believe everything that they say. We can go out there and we can research for ourselves how others have succeeded in, in areas where, you know, doctors have given up. And we get that breath of hope. We get that breath of fresh air. And we go out there and we try to do things for ourselves. Um, there's a lot that goes with growing. And as an entrepreneur myself, I will put someone in their place very, very fast with a smile. And it's because I've experienced so many different avenues and areas. Nothing new is under the sun. There's nothing new that I haven't already encountered in some form or fashion, you know? So I want you to hold on to that too, entrepreneurs, because this is an area and a time where you can make your decisions if you just stand up and say, this is what I decide to do. There's no hiding. There's no, you know, changing your mind. It was always there since the day one. Now, when you manipulate and use people against each other to get what it is you want, that's manipulation and narcissism. And it should be checked because there's going to come a time when a person cries wolf so much, so long, people who normally come to their aid will no longer be there for them. And of course, the narcissist in a relationship who is controlling a victim truly and genuinely understands this perspective. It could be, I'm going to get frustrated today just so he can go to his mom and his mom will be there to support him and give him that pat on the back and that hope just to bring him back in, just to play with his emotion or her emotion for a, a month. One month. That's all it takes, right? And then. And then when I'm ready to pull the carpet from under him or her, I'm going to do that. And she's going to fall or he's going to fall on his back only to go back to the hope generator so that the hope generator will give them the supply needed in order to get through that process. Only for the manipulator to come back and try to just to see if it's a game, to, to, to see if they would win. To come back, to genuinely say, I just want to see if I can get her back. I just want to see if I can get him to buy into what I'm saying here. And that's not good. These are moral and ethical situations that I've seen people in as clients or that I have witnessed myself or have endured myself. And so these, these areas of saying no, it means no. That's it. That's it. And it's so easy. There comes a time, I'm going to finalize this up to, 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 to today. There comes a time when people will test you just to see if it's available and when it's not that that very second that split second when you make the decision is the time that your life is going to shift and move to a direction that is going to be either better than what it would have been or different than what it would have been you know it's never worse it's always different or better so with that, I want you to take that with you when you make the decision. You know, this is cuffing season. Season. Everyone wants to be, you know, um, comfortable. You know, this is a time where it's cold and it's cruel outside. So if you don't understand how to survive on your own independently, um, you may be <coughs> forced 
to take second best. You may be forced to be in a relationship you really don't want to be in. You may be forced that your client base is so minimal right now, you'll just take whatever. But being mindful that that whatever is the thing that you're going to be dealing with over the course of the winter. Is that going to be feasible for you? Is that going to be worth it for you? You know, people can lie and speak into existence anything they want, but their actions must show stronger than that. And everyone has to benefit from a circumstance if it's going to be equally understood. I can't just give 100% and someone gives zero. They can give 100% and, and I give nothing. It has to be equal and it is based upon the relationship value that the individual wants for themselves. And that is so variable. It's so fluctuating, you know. And and um, I was listening to my grandson's history class yesterday. And in it, they were talking about the wars and how, you know, different things was happening in history. And I said to myself, and I asked my grandson, I said, how is it that they're always continually talking about the war, the war, the war? And his response was very clear and very, very intelligent. He says, because you have to make a decision. Are you going to constantly battle? So you leave this battle to go fight this battle, to go fight this battle, and you don't like anyone. You don't like the Indians. You don't like the Japanese. You don't like the African American. Only to go and fight a battle and think you won. But at what cost? Is so much loss and there's so much uh, challenge in it. Is it worth the battle? Because the war will never be won. Because there's always going to be someone somewhere fighting against the opposition. Always. So with that, if we in, 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 in tie that, if we tie that into, excuse me, I guess this retrograde is just making everything just so <laughs> like sound like a record that's just stuck. <laughs> but I'm going to keep going because this is a poor, important to discuss. But um, if we decide that we're going to keep going, we do win the war. And the war is when it's all said and done. So no matter how many battles we fight, at what cost do we win? Do we win or do we make enemies during that fight? And as a Sagittarius, that's so deep for me because I'm a fighter. So I look at things from a oppositional standpoint. But now I'm seeing that, is it even worth it? As I, as I mature, I find that out. So I want you to think about that too entrepreneurs when people tell you oh well I guess you're really not my friend if you can't do this or that or whatever no 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 we're way stronger than that in the mind and the in in the spirit we're stronger than that so stay strong entrepreneurs be consistent be ready be on time and be the best you can be in the shoes you're rocking because you're wearing the damn things you're wearing them shoes, those stilettos, whatever you're wearing, those Reeboks, those New Balances, those uh, Burlington Specials, you're wearing them. Keep going. Keep going. Even if they're flip-flop sandals, you keep going. God bless you, and we'll see you next time.